Okay, so here we are for video number three in our Game Frame Joe's Escape tutorial. Now, I'm going to be pasting in a little bit of code here because we need to build our maze. So what we're going to do for our character this time around is we're going to use a 2D array to set up our maze so that we can import all of the blocks into their correct position. And then from there, we are going to use a nested loop. Okay, so there's going to be a little bit of code that I will put in the comments that you can copy into your... Um, platform file to make things a little bit easier because otherwise you're going to have to get this absolutely perfect and it's it's a little bit annoying. So let's have a look. What we're going to do is we're going to paste our maze in. So this is what our maze is actually going to be. So each of these letters that you can see or underscores is going to mean a certain thing. Now specifically what we're looking for here, all of the underscores that you can see are going to be blank spaces that our player can move around and then the other letters correspond to something that's going to be seen on screen and you'll see what they are in our um, nested loop that we build in a second. So this is what we refer to as a 2D array and basically what that is is it is a list of lists. So in Python lists can be created with um, square brackets and you can see those there so the start and the end okay and then each individual item within that list is split up with a comma. So these pieces here are going to be all of our data okay so moving on from there what we then need to do is we actually need to create our nested list no nested loop okay let's get our terms right okay so our nested loop and what that basically means is we have a loop within a loop and I'll explain how this is all going to draw it up in a second so for now what we're going to do is actually put the loop code in and then I will um, I'm going to jump into Illustrator and show you how this works just with some squares because it'll make a little bit more sense. But to create a loop, we're going to create a for loop to start with, and we're going to have i for increment, and then we're going to call it a row in numerate. Okay, and it is going to be room objects there. Okay, so normally what we would do now is we would put whatever the code is that we want for our loop, so for i. Okay. But in this instance, what we're going to do instead is we are going to add another loop inside of that. And this will all make sense in a little while. So we're going to add a 4j and then obj, in this case, for objects in enumerate. And then we're going to have row. Okay, so basically those two lines of code are almost the same. But this is where we actually start to build our loop. So we're going to start with if obj equals equals, and then we're going to have n. So you can see that this is one of those characters that appears up here. So this is where we're going to tell it what n is. We're going to have self dot add underscore room object. Okay, and what we're going to have here is block open brackets self j times 32 i times 32 and then ing underscore and then this time we want ground flat. So that means, basically, if we have a look at what this code means, just for these two lines here, anywhere that there is an M on screen, so you can see heaps of them at the bottom here, a couple there, a couple up here, we are going to have the ground flat image appear. So that's this one here. All right, so super easy for us to find out what that's going to start to look like. So the whole bottom of the screen almost, except for the sides, is going to be covered with those. Okay, now we just need to go through and add the rest of them. So there's a fair bit of code that we're going to add here. So just bear with me, and what I might do is I'm going to get it typed in, and then I'm going to zoom through it really quick, because I don't think you need to sit there and watch me type it, but you might want to then pause the video so that you can copy this code down. All right, fantastic. So there we go. Um, as you'll see, there's obviously a fair bit of code there. So I would recommend pausing the video here and then copying that down. But basically, the things that you need to be really careful about is that you are using the correct case here. Okay, so obviously we've got an M and a capital M and a G and a capital G. Okay, and they're important because that's obviously going to be depending uh, which character appears. So we don't want uh, 
blocks to appear instead of where the monsters are or lots of monsters to appear instead. Okay, so make sure that you're using the correct case here. Make sure that we are calling the right file here. And then obviously down here, we're starting to call some different objects. Now these objects in our game don't exist yet. And that's really important for us to understand. So when we're looking at those, um, we can't test our game yet because it can't find block or it can't find player or goal or monster or monster too. So let's actually have a quick talk about what this code is doing. So you can see here, remember that we had our two loops. So we had our four I loop and our four J loop. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly open up Illustrator and I'm going to start drawing some squares. But what I might do first is I might put a uh, I in here. Okay, so I is one. And then I might add some stuff at the top here. So J equals one. Just move across like this. J equals two. J equals three. Now, assuming, let's just do two lines here. I equals two. All right. So, assuming that these squares that I draw, which will probably end up not being squares anyway, um, let's assume. Oops, let's go to the wrong spot. I think. You aligned cells. Okay. So assuming that, let's move this J over a little bit. No, I can't because there we go. All right, so assuming that we have just a grid of six spots. So in our code, if we quickly jump back into it here, um, we actually have a grid that is 25 rows by 17 pixels. Other way around, 25 wide, 17 high. Okay, so that's going to mean that it, we need to get our i to be 17 in, seven, in terms of rows and our j to be 25 wide. So in the little example that I'm going to draw up here, we would only have 3 by 2. Okay, so when it gets to the first part of our code here, so our first bit, it's going to come in here. It's going to go, okay, so first off, i is going to be 1, okay, and j is going to be 1. So it's then going to draw a square here. Now, hopefully these all line up. Let's quickly change the colors here so that this makes sense a little bit more. So I might put a bit in there and let's change the stroke color so we can actually see it. Black. We want to make that a little bit lighter. Okay, so we have our first spot. Okay, now each of the images that we're bringing into our code at this point in time are going to be 32 pixels wide by 32 pixels high. Okay, and that's important because when i equals 1, and j equals 1, we're going to draw our first pixel. So on our code, when we come back into our maze, that would be this L character. So you would know that that means it's going to draw the left object. Okay. Now from here, basically what we're looking to do is we are looking to loop through the same things. Now because we haven't exited our j loop yet, that means our i number doesn't change. So our i is going to stay 1 until we get all the way across to the other side of our row. Okay, but our J is going to keep going up. So when we have a look at this one here back in Illustrator, if I copy and paste this one the second time through the code, what it's going to do is it's going to bring another one of these over, and now we're going to have J is 1, uh, sorry, J is 2, I is 1. Okay, and then again, if we quickly put that one back in again, the second, third time through the loop, we would end up with J is 3, I is 1. And this is where we start to build that grid. Okay, so each time through the code, what it's going to be doing is it's going to keep looking to see if there is more information in our matrix for J. So it's going to go J1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on and so forth until it gets to 25. Once it gets to 25, it has no more data to do. So that's what it's then going to jump down and it's going to exit our first loop. Okay, or sorry, our nested loop. It's going to exit this loop here and it's going to jump back to the top loop and it's going to say, is there more data for I? And when it gets back up here, it's going to go, yep, there's more data for I, which means then it's going to jump back down into the J loop again and it has to start fresh. So it's going to go J is 1, 2, 3, except this time around, when we're adding our information in, we are going to have our next piece of data added here. Okay, and then we would have J is 2, but I is 2. And then J is 3, but I is 2. 
okay, and so on and so forth. Now that diagram's not perfect and it doesn't necessarily um, explain everything 100%, but what I want you to understand from this is that each time we loop through our code, basically what we're doing is we're adding one to J, so we keep going across until we get to 25 over here, and then once we hit 25, which is the last one, we exit the loop for J. Okay, so we're exiting this loop here, um, that one there, and then we would actually go back to see if there's more data for I. And because there is, that then means we come back into the J loop, except it starts again because it's now a fresh piece of code, and it's going to then work through that next section there. Okay, so it'll keep doing this over and over and over again until it gets to the very bottom. Once it gets to this pixel here, or this little block of code here, it's going to put that U in, which is our under one. Okay, and then it's going to say, is there any more information for J? No. Is there any more information for I? No. And then it's going to exit that loop and move on to the rest of the code that we have down here. Okay, so our nested loop is a really, really efficient way for us to be able to write that code. But let's have a look at what it's actually doing. So when we have a look here, we can see that it says J times 32 and I times 32. So remember how I was talking about the numbers for counting here? So I is 1 and J is 1, I is 1, J is 2, J is 3, J is 4. What that's going to do for us is it's going to actually calculate the position in which to place this particular icon each time that M is written on the board. Okay, so anytime it sees an M, it's going to um, quickly calculate where it needs to be based on what number J is up to and what number I is up to. Okay, and that's why I wanted to draw these as squares, because you can see that when J is 1, we would have a position here, but when J is 2, we actually multiply J2 times 32, which gets us to a different position. Okay, so that's going to then move us along one whole block. Then when we multiply 3 by 32, we then move across another block, and then the same obviously works when we go down the screen. So hopefully that gives you an understanding of how our maze is actually going to be constructed by the code. So again, a super quick overview of that one. We build our maze with this code here. Each of the letters then uh, equates to a different block. Once we have a look here in our room objects, okay, in our nested loop, we are going to look in each row for how many pieces of data we have, which is our J. And then for each of the J's that are there, it is going to go and find what letter is written in each position. And then if it finds that letter, in this case L, it will then place that object on screen so that we can see it. Now, I'm going to leave this video there because it's starting to get a little bit long, and then we are going to jump into the next video where we start to build our objects. I just want to reinforce, we can't test our game yet because our game doesn't know what each of these things is. It doesn't know what block is, doesn't know what player, goal, monster, etc. So we would just get an error. So in the next video, we're going to build those objects, which means that we can almost start testing the game and seeing how we from there. So I'll see you in the next video.